Vertical landing on the drone ship is something that many companies and organizations dream of but have not been able to do. Meanwhile, SpaceX has done it so many times over the years with the Falcon 9 rocket and turned that feat into its own symbol moment. That's just with the Falcon 9. So what if SpaceX pushes this method to a higher level by applying it to the booster of the world's largest rocket? Yeah, I mean the super heavy booster, the first stage of the Starship rocket. This will definitely be a great stride. Indeed, compared to other methods, landing super heavy on a drone ship can be said to be an effective solution. Not only does it make each mission more impressive, but it also solves many challenges and brings great benefits to SpaceX's Starship project. So what are the benefits of landing the super heavy booster on the drone ship? Will SpaceX apply it in the future? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. It can be said that during its development process, SpaceX always surprises the world with its crazy ideas. Even though they're crazy, they somehow always show incredible efficiency. Landing a drone ship is also such an idea. Before SpaceX and their Falcon 9 rocket appeared, we probably all thought that vertical landing was something that only happened in movies, and doing this on a drone ship was even more impossible. But Elon Musk and his team changed everything. However, Super Heavy will be very different from Falcon 9's booster. It has a height of up to 71 meters, including a hot staging ring, has an empty mass of 200 tons, and can carry 3,400 tons of fuel. With 33 Raptor engines, this booster can generate a maximum thrust of 7,590 tons or 16.7 million pounds. These figures are completely superior to the Falcon 9 booster. Therefore, landing the Super Heavy will be much more difficult. According to the plan of the first launches, SpaceX is still choosing to land the Super Heavy straight in the ocean. This is because they want to focus on other tasks, so that method will minimize risks. But in the future, if SpaceX wants to reuse Super Heavy, this method will not be suitable. SpaceX has proposed many landing methods for Starship, the most typical of which is landing using the Mechazilla catching arm. These arms not only serve tasks like lifting, stacking, and launching, but they are also responsible for catching the Starship stages, including the Super Heavy as they return to the launch site for landing. This method has many benefits. First, it will help SpaceX save a lot of time and transportation costs. After a successful landing, they simply lift the booster down and move it to refurbishment facilities. They can even do this right on the launch mount. That will help relaunch missions much faster, possibly within just an hour, as Elon Musk previously mentioned. Second, landing with the Mechazilla arm will help SpaceX reduce a lot of mass-like landing legs. Thanks to that, they can optimize this mass for other, more important payloads. As for visually, landing with arms is clearly impressive. A pinnacle of science and technology, something no other organization has dared to think of. However, landing this way has many disadvantages. First, Booster will have to return to the launch site, thus consuming more fuel. This has been proven with the Falcon 9 when the booster returning to the launch site will consume at least twice as much fuel compared to landing on the drone ship. Landing with the Mechazilla arm also requires a series of operations with extremely high precision. Controlling the booster and Mechazilla arm will have to be smooth and coordinated so that the Super Heavy goes perfectly between the chopsticks. This process is not allowed to make mistakes because if something goes wrong, the booster collides or falls freely, which could cause damage to the launch tower and surrounding facilities. Don't forget that there are fuel tanks near the launch tower. It would be a disaster if those leaked and caught fire, which could cause large-scale damage. At that time, landing on a drone ship like Falcon 9's booster surprisingly became an extremely potential option for landing Super Heavy. First, Landing on a drone ship will help Super Heavy become more flexible in landing. The drone ship is a movable structure, so SpaceX can land Super Heavy anywhere they want, as long as it does not affect other activities in the ocean. Thanks to that, 
booster consumes much less fuel than returning to the launch site, thereby optimizing them for flight. But safety is still the biggest advantage. Landing on a drone ship will not require too many complicated processes like catching by Mechazilla arm. Minimizing risks is certainly a top priority for each mission. When landing by this method, it will limit impacts like noise, dust, and vibration, ensuring safety for people and property. The ocean will be a good natural barrier to prevent any impact if any unexpected incidents occur. The use of drone ships will be necessary when SpaceX increases the Starship launch schedule to large frequencies in the future. Like over thousands of launches per year, as Elon Musk previously mentioned, drone ships will be extremely important to share that huge workload. Thanks to that, SpaceX can confidently launch many starships to serve important missions like landing on the moon or building self-sufficient cities on Mars. Not only faster, but they will also help reduce flight costs greatly, possibly to only $1 to $2 million as Elon Musk's goal. That will be extremely important for future missions that could be extremely expensive. Last but not least, building a drone ship will be much simpler than building a launch tower. Currently. SpaceX only has one launch tower at Starbase, Texas, and another in Florida. Even though the speed of building the towers is relatively fast compared to many other organizations, it will still take quite a while. Moreover, the construction of the launch tower will depend on land funds and approval from many other related agencies and companies. Meanwhile, using drone ships is not too affected by these problems, SpaceX is also completely confident with this method because it has been applied very successfully with Falcon 9. SpaceX currently has three drone ships available to land the Falcon 9. As of the December 8 flight, SpaceX performed 210 landing attempts on the drone ship with a success rate of nearly 95%. Thanks to that, boosters are continuously refurbished and reused. To date, SpaceX has had the Booster B-1058 landed and reused up to 18 times and many other boosters have surpassed the milestone of 10 times. The above achievements have a great contribution to the drone ship landing method. Those are the clearest numbers proving the reliability of this method. So applying it to Super Heavy is also completely feasible. Of course, SpaceX still needs to make adjustments if they choose this method to land the Super Heavy booster. Because compared to Falcon 9's booster, Super Heavy is much different in size, mass, thrust, and design. SpaceX will need to do many tasks like creating larger, more stable drone ships or designing structures to keep the booster. In short, applying this method still entails many changes and requires SpaceX to consider carefully before deciding. But after all, landing Super Heavy on a drone ship is still an option worth waiting for. Using a drone ship doesn't mean SpaceX will not use other methods like the Mechazilla arm. Instead, they can combine them together. Along with the other methods, landing on a drone ship will help make SpaceX's cost optimization strategy as effective as possible. Vertical landing on a drone ship is also one of the feats of the current aerospace industry, something that not many rocket companies can do. So what could be better than if SpaceX could gather all the industry's best elites into their Starship project? Thousands of Starships will fly up, and they will return to Earth like heroes on drone ships, middle of the vast ocean. It's a great ending to every mission of the world's largest rocket in the future. But everything will still wait for Elon Musk and SpaceX to make a decision. It is difficult for us to predict what insane ideas they will come up with in the future. Let's wait and see what happens in upcoming Starship flights. And you, what do you think about this landing method? Please leave your opinion in the comments section below. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.